Hmm. Hello. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world. My name is Kelly Murray. I'm the Chief Engagement Officer with the Consortium for Service Innovation. I, As I'm saying these words, I'm realizing that I have not changed my name on Zoom to reflect who I am or where I am in the world. If you have a moment to do that, that's fun, um, especially as we do things perhaps in the chat today. Um, it's lovely to know where, where you're from. So today we're going to talk a little bit about the changes, the recent changes to the KCS V6 Adoption and Transformation Guide. And as we're sort of still getting gathered, I'm going to just tell you quickly about two upcoming events, um, KCS and Action Calls coming up. Uh, one is, is it next week? Is November 17th next week? I think it is. Um, Alation, Jessica Wu from Alation is going to talk about their journey, their KCS journey. That'll be from 8 to 9 Pacific on November 17th. I'll put a link in the chat in just a minute. And then in December, um, Kendall from F5 is going to talk about how they are seeing huge benefits of a KCS coaching program um, at F5 and how they have been um, quantifying and selling those benefits uh, internally. So that's a pretty exciting, I'm, I'm looking forward to a case study coming out of that particular um, KCS and Action Call because they have some really lovely data around how that's really made their um, program, um, their KCS program as a whole, very successful. So those are the two um, soonest coming up events. And in January, which apparently is right around the corner, we're going to do a KCS and Action Roundtable. Um, and so those will be those will be breakout rooms, a slightly longer call, uh, eight to ten Pacific on January nineteenth about various topics. So with all of that being said, um, I will drop the link in the chat and Sarah did already for each of those <laughs> events. Um, and um, I think with that, I would love to say hello and good morning to Jennifer Crippen from DBK and Associates, who is going to talk us through um, some of these changes and, and, and why we made them and um, sort of the thinking behind them and, and what they are. So take it away, Jen. Awesome. Thanks, Kelly. Good morning and good afternoon, maybe good evening to some of you also. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I have a maybe like a quick presentation to share with you here on the updates and and take us through this a little bit here. There we go. Um, uh, I'm Jennifer Crippen with DBK and Associates. I'm really excited to share these updates with you today. Um, I have a 21 years experience with KCS. I've been um, a certified trainer and aligned consultant for the last 12 years with the consortium. Um, and uh, the, the way we'll talk about this a little bit today is introduce the changes and updates, you know, a little bit of why we made these updates, how it all came to be, and then open it up really for a, a pretty good conversation. I'm hoping with some feedback and questions, we have some um, team members uh, participating today who contributed to these updates um, that I'm, I'm kind of extending some time to share their experiences as well. Um, let's go ahead and get into some of the exciting news here. The KCS Adoption Guide has officially become the KCS V6 Adoption and Transformation Guide. The name itself changed slightly. Um, this all started maybe about eight or nine months ago um, when uh, there was a spark in the slack that started to poke at the and challenge some of the information in the guide and some of the structure of the guide uh, and prompted us to formally get together to discuss this more. A group of us, of members, uh, collaborated around these challenges we were experiencing using the existing guide. The result of this effort, you know, we met, I would say, every uh, once a month, every few weeks or so over these months and weeks. But the result um, is that we have some really exciting updates to share with you. Some of the expectations I want to set for these updates um, is a few concepts around moving away from the idea that adoption is something we do once and then we're done. But it's a garden. Um, the analogy of KCS and knowledge bases being a garden that require tending and care and seasonal changes and always looking after it 
really apply <laughs> to a lot of the discussions that we had and the thinking around the changes that transpired. Another expectation I want to set here is making it explicit um, in the guide that we need time to learn, you know, how to do KCS before we experience the internal benefits. And then we can enjoy the external benefits. I think there's a lot of conversation we had around just like, check this box, check that box. It's linear. You did it. You're done. You've transformed. And um, that there was a need to really, you know, kind of expand more on the learning of KCS and really getting good at this stuff before maybe we move forward too quickly, too soon. Um, and so you'll see some of those themes extended here uh, in the updates to share with you. So some of the challenges, you know, uh, you know, I think it's really explaining you know, how the, the changes came to be was that we had challenges with with the guide and using the guide both, you know, with our customers and for some of the members, of course, using the guide internally inside their organizations. And some of the challenges here were, you know, the literal move. And this is this is the spark that kind of started the conversation was recognizing that in the move from version five to version six of the practices, there was a separation between a, you know, learning how to do KCS, um, B, receiving internal benefits from learning how to do KCS, and then C, receiving external customer benefits. And this was really lost in that update from version five to version six. So we, wanna, we wanted to get back to that um, and make sure it was much more um, explicit within the, the, the guide itself. Um, also in version six of the adoption guide, the internal benefits really got kind of squished into adoption and leveraging as phases um, in the adoption guide. Um, again, this kind of not recognizing the loopiness and the um, ever evolving continuous improvement of KCS isn't just about um, we got those benefits in adopting and then in leveraging and, and now we're moving on, but recognizing that we need to kind of foster and care for those benefits so we don't lose any of the great stuff that, that we've already accomplished. The names of the phases also were a challenge. Um, if, I'm, if I could share with you the time we talked through, <laughs> it was a lot of time um, that we talked through these phases and just the names of the phases themselves. Um, and in version, uh, in the current version, just the phases re not reflecting um, what was happening in those phases very well. And so um, what we'll share with you on the next slide are kind of exactly what those changes are. Um, and one of the last challenges that was evident in our conversations was leadership struggling to understand KCS transformation was long term, not just a few checkboxes along the way to deflection. Um, um, I think that this this was a, a pretty big one, actually, for me personally, working with a lot of, you know, organizations. And for those of you, you know, as leaders or, you know, partnering and collaborating with leadership, thinking about, like, how do we get KCS done tomorrow, right? How do we get deflection, like, right now? Well, but there's a whole transformation <laughs> um, that the guide has laid out for us to get there. Uh, it just doesn't happen tomorrow. And from those challenges... Um, we had some considerations. Um, one consideration uh, was uh, that transformation is not linear. It's and and it's not one directional. It's loopy, in a good way that it's loopy, um, that it's more fluid. That we can you know actually be in multiple phases, perhaps at different times, and that we don't just look behind in those phases. Like oh, we did that already, so we don't have to worry about that stuff anymore. Um, you know, that this is a, an opportunity for us to really ensure this becomes, you know, um, part of our DNA, KCS becomes part of our DNA, um, and that we're always tracking the things that we've accomplished and done to make sure they continuously uh, are improving and healthy, as well as transformation itself is not a cookie cutter situation. Uh, I really like this one too, um, that we're all working in environments with hugely variable conditions. And so, allowing and supporting the guide to be a little bit more adoptable across different, you know, environments, situations, industries, IT, you know, versus technical support, um, I think was also a big, a big piece to it. So let's get into some of the changes that we want to announce. 
with you today. Um, first is the um, the names of the phases themselves um, uh, changed. Um, planning and design went from phase one, planning and design to plan and design. What we did is we left behind uh, the, the numbered phases as part of the names themselves to eliminate the, uh, the dependency on um, sequence. <laughs> Though plan and design as a phase is very likely where we would recommend that you start as you move through these phases, they, they become a little bit more um, fluid. Um, the next the next one to change went from phase two adopting to adopt in waves, a little bit more descriptive of the phase of not just, you know, we're adopting KCS that can actually take a very long time, but really more the wave approach to adoption and, you know, over time, uh, starting small and then gaining more momentum with more people um, and following that adoption in a wave approach was really much a better descriptive um, anecdote to this this phase itself. Phase three, leveraging change to build proficiency. Um, you know, this one, uh, you know, really had some good uh, foundation behind it. Um, but leveraging wasn't enough of a description to this. This really, the proficiency around the organizational proficiency, it's not just the proficiency model or the license model and learning or adopting KCS, but actually how as an organization we're building proficiency to support KCS, to keep it going, to keep it healthy, to continuously improve. Um, and it and it became a much, you know, kind of broad across the organization description. Great improvement. One of my favorites actually out of what, what we did here. Um, and the last one, phase four, maximizing change to just optimize and innovate. Um, you know, fundamentally, these phases didn't change, by the way. I mean, we didn't then go into each phase and make a lot of huge changes underneath. This was really just an, an, uh, an effort in really kind of better describing what these phases are intended to be and be more useful and also eliminate the sequence of the phases themselves um, in the, the structure of the guide. Um, <clears throat> one of the other areas that changed along with the four phases was the measurements uh, around those four phases, um, four areas of adoption uh, and transformation. And planning and design really does still have exit criteria. I think as you're as you're planning to launch something to kind of kick KCS off, you really do need to have a set of criteria met in order to do that. So it made sense that that phase continues to have uh, exit criteria and indicators to be ready. Um, for the next three phases, we really moved more towards um, indicators of transformation, uh, therefore having adoption indicators and having proficiency indicators and optimization indicators um, was a really uh, um, just seemed like peanut butter and jelly. It just seemed like the next best thing to make an update to how we were now referring to these phases and the measurements that went along with it. And of course, there were some measurements that as we looked through um, the indicators themselves, we um, recognized that maybe a few in um, what used to be leveraging needed to be moved into adopting. And, you know, so there were a, a few adjustments there, but again, nothing major, nothing foundationally changed in those areas just made it better for everybody yeah Kelly I one of the things I loved the most about this particular shift was that moving away from uh calling this these used to be exit criteria for phase two or exit criteria for phase three and so removing um again that expectation of linearness from it right like well we we better exit phase two right like you might need to revisit some of the stuff in phase two, right? These things are cumulative as opposed to like, well, we've graduated and we're never going back to phase two again um, yeah. is less helpful. And so this, this idea of like, let's just go check in on those adoption indicators, right? There's nothing, um, it, it removes the linear uh, thinking around it. Absolutely. Or helps to. Absolutely, Kelly. Yeah, that's really right. And um I think with all the loopiness that we also talked about here <laughs> was 
you really could still be adopting in waves, but also starting to build organizational proficiency. And so due to that, you know, you don't want to stop yourself from being able to mature and move forward and get ready for what's next and what you're interested in and what you, you know, you need to be ready for. But um, recognizing that you could be, for lack of a better term, like straddling these phases in different parts of the organization even. Um, and this, these changes support that in a way, I think that's just much more um, clear, you know, uh, than it did before. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great. Good book. Some additional comments I want to share with everybody um, on the changes to the uh, uh, updated transformation, uh, adoption and transformation guide. KCS phases are building blocks to success as opposed to steps in a project that have a completion date. I think that this is, you know, a big part of the concept of uh, the changes that were made um, and, and, and making these adjustments. Thinking about um, well, I'll, I'll talk about the gears on the on the right hand side of the slide here in just a minute. Um, and that the indicators and results, as we just you know mentioned, um, uh, the exit criteria for adopting in waves and build proficiency and optimize are now more in, in indicators of transformation. But hey, by the way, uh, measurement matters also was updated uh, as a, a supplement to the adoption guide. And, you know, as so many of the KCS materials and references and guides are all interconnected, um, there was a pretty significant uplift in going through the measurement matters paper and applying these changes there. Um, so many more updates uh, were made. Um, the practices guide also um, and you know, I think what I found as I was going through some of these changes myself was, wow, the great enabler. This makes it, it just ties everything, I think, for me a little bit closer to home. Um, and KCS being the great enabler to anything else you want to do across the organization, uh, whether it's self service, transformation, adaptive organization, intelligence, where I mean, this is it. Um, this uh, supports the ability to do this um, in a practical way. It also improved the description of the indicators evolving through the phases. So again, I think with measurement matters specifically, there's just so much more around measurements and indicators um, uh, and more description around um, how they evolve through the different phases of adoption and transformation. Um, um, there's even more symmetry between the measurement matters in the, the current updated guide. KCS is a garden and it requires tending and care. Um, I really do all for years, I've been thinking about KCS and talking about it as a garden and, you know, as the seasons change and, you know, things I want to do differently and things I learned from last spring, you know, maybe I don't want to plant zucchini ever again, for whatever reason, maybe, right. Oh, learn that lesson, not going to do that. But now I want to put in some, you know, watermelons next year and try that. And, this is now a very uh, fluid and loopy approach to make those changes, try new things, because our seasons are always changing. Our gardens have the potential to not always be the same thing all the time. And bringing it back to business, business changes constantly. That's a good thing. And this KCS program and its evolution uh, it should change with your business. It shouldn't be so rigid that it can't evolve with your business and continuously improve. And um, this garden analogy, you know, really fits. We'll continue to use it. Um, and from a, a leadership perspective, these updates really align more with transformation. I think, you know, again, going back to some of the conversations we had, we talked about transformation and should it be part of the title and which were all really good conversations. Um, it's not just a guide for adoption. It really is a guide that that helps you to transform into something better, into something new, something that can continuously improve with your business. And so um, using this more and more going forward with leadership and facilitating their ability to better support KCS and drive success over time, I think is going to be very exciting. Um, and I, I really look forward to that. So with some of these, um, changes. I want to just really quick uh, want to thank everybody that contributed to it and especially Kelly 
Murray and Greg Oxton for all the actual changes that you spent time <laughs> in the documentation itself, getting in there and making those changes. We know that that was quite a bit of work. Um, but also, you know, thanking uh, everyone else who participated, uh, Ryan Matthews from NetApp, Jacob Watts from Partech, Adam Hansen from Thermo Fisher, da uh, David Kay from DBK and Associates, Monique Kadana from Ping Identity, and Andy Kindle from NetApp, and Sam Good from Computa Center. Um, and with that, I want to open it up. I'd love to hear more, you know, from Kelly and Adam, you know, and Jacob. Um, if we have Ryan or, you know, Monique on, on the line too, I'd, I'd just love to open it up. They're absolutely um, ready to answer and, any questions and provide any additional feedback. I'd love to hear if you have any experiences about the work that we did here and sharing those experiences. So love to open it up with everybody. I did uh, include hyperlinks, you know, on the slide. So anybody who's using the slide uh, later on will have access to getting to the updated material. But thanks. Yeah. What kind of questions do we have? Any comments in the chat? I um, have a few thoughts in mm -hmm. terms of um, things that that I was thinking about as you were sort of going through this and how yeah. how fun it is to be a part of this process, right, in which um, members who are who are deep into the KCS world uh, come together to provide feedback on how it's working or how it's not working and how we can, how we can change it and grow it and make it better. Um, and actually, Jen, if you want to stop yes. sharing, then, uh, then we're kind of in the, now we're around a table together. Yeah, great. Ev eventually we will be right. So, um, so one of the things I feel like that has really one of the ways the conversation has shifted over the last couple of years. Um, maybe five or six years ago, there were lots of talks about how do I sustain KCS? And that maybe should have been a good indicator that maybe we weren't approaching this kind of shift in the right way. Because I think um, in hindsight, that was really indicative of approaching it um, as a checklist. Right. If, if well, I went through the checklist, I, I did all the things the adoption guide said, and now I'm all done. And I don't understand why, you know, I haven't paid attention to this corner of my garden in six months. I don't understand why it's overgrown. <laughs> That's what we do at my house. <laughs> and so I think um, th that the two things uh, that I think are really helpful about the shifts that we made here are I think it sort of takes away the expectation that, like, I'm, I'm, I have done the work and now the work is done and I never have to think about it again. Right. There's there, this is, this is a living system that needs um, care and tending um, because life finds a way. Right. And so you can, you can lay the groundwork and then you set, set people loose um, in the garden and they do all kinds of unexpected things. You set the plants loose in the garden, they do all kinds of unexpected things. Um, and so really um, framing this as something that you, that is, that is fluid and changing and, and needs our attention. Right. Um, so the other piece of this uh, that came to mind was this uh, idea around setting executive expectation and being able to take away the numbers and being really more specific around, um, well, we moved from adopting to leveraging, right? Well, do, it's not terribly descriptive. And also maybe we forgot to tell you that we're going to need time to build proficiency, right? And and Ryan, this was, I think, a big um, point of yours, which was the whole idea that like, we built a brand new system. We built a new way of working together and sort of sharing knowledge and being in this space together. And we're going to need some time to get good at it. So I um, can't leverage things before I have gotten good at them. And I certainly can't maximize and I'm actually not entirely sure what leveraging and maximizing mean, quite frankly, right? So this idea of slightly more descriptive, right? I, I feel pretty good about knowing what adopting in waves means. And we're finding that lots of people who have adopted KCS get interest from other parts of the organization who also want to adopt KCS. So then you have multiple really KCS adoptions happening, right? So this part of your organization might still be adopting waves. This part, to your point, Jen, right, which was this mm -hmm. whole, like, you actually are going to be building proficiency. The, <laughs> this team is, while well, right. this team's still yeah. adopting in waves. And over here, we are starting to optimize and innovate, right? So I just love that idea that um, we can make more explicit the things that are really happening over this, over this transformation. Yeah. Um, so- those were those were my thoughts. 
Yeah. Hi, John. Hey, Jen. Hey, uh, Kelly. What are the, what are your, what are, in your opinion, what are the top two most dramatic changes that you guys are instituting here? I think first and foremost would be for sure just removing the, the numbered sequence of the phases to eliminate the linear thinking around the guide and the phases of, of KCS adoption and transformation. And um, also, I think really more so the changes between adopting, moving to adopt in waves and leveraging, moving to build proficiency. I, th I think those two things are quite significant here. Um, though, the adjustments thereafter were very minimal based on those changes. I think it really just adds an element of usability of the guide. You know, honestly, it's a little bit more, um, yeah, usable, I think, in, in this way. So that'd be, that, that'd be my top two. Cool. Yeah. Ryan, I see your hands up. Yeah, I was just... Uh going to help uh, Jennifer here and, and thanks uh, with for the great overview and, and Kelly, thanks for bringing this all together. Um, you know, one thing I really have appreciated about the adoption guide over the years is it's, it's so practitioner based. I mean, um, we've done a nice job of facilitating and publishing the practices guide as a real, um, you know, item you can put to action and once you adapt it to your business. But I think the adoption guide specifically was, was really the how-to manual, right? And the fact that we've added a lot of uh, pragmatism and practicality to it and, and kind of real life scenarios where you're always going to be adopting, right? People are coming and going into the organization all the time. And I think the new format is really reflective of this idea that that fluidity and you guys have covered that a great deal but i thought i'd just illustrate something that i think is is you know you would get if you've had a chance to read it but if you haven't had a chance to read it um like john was just asking you know we introduced the concept of you know process adherence review and content standard checklist for example in adopt in waves as simply an introduction um, there's no mention of measures there's no mention of a number now where there used to be uh, in proficiency, you know, we we call that out that maybe that's a target that you want to then introduce. And I think what had happened in the version five adoption guide to version six, you know, the adoption phase got really big and deep and the proficiency got a little bit more narrow and specific. And as a result, you know, if you weren't careful in managing your communications up and down the organization, people were jumping ahead or getting stuck in one place too long. And I think there's greater balance in the fact that, you know, as you plan and design and then you move into adopting in waves, you know, you might have to kind of go back and forth there a few times to get it right. But once you do, you know, parts of your organization can then start to move on. And I think every step of the way, you're guided in a very pragmatic, practical approach. Um, the other thing that I really like about the final, um, you know, optimize and innovate section around continual improvement is how we um, bring in other elements of the consortium work specific to KCS, namely the success and channels and the KDA program. I think a lot of times, you know, if you look at the, the practices guide overall, um, you know, 95% of it was very solve loop based. And it, this is a way to introduce more evolve loop concepts not simply evolve loop content, but just evolve loop practices and things to round out a holistic approach. So I think, you know, to answer John's question about the two big things, I, I think that proficiency has grown significantly. So it's more balanced with the other components. And then the optimize and innovate is really long-term focused. And we bring in a lot of the other consortium material. And I think you guys will really, really appreciate it as you kind of go through it with that uh, overview that, that Jennifer provided and kind of those two salient points, because that was that was the real change. And that was the element that we were discussing originally in Slack was like, hey, you know, the 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 phase three, the old phase three was too limited. It was too it was too focused and it's been broadened and, and better balanced across the whole thing. Yeah, awesome. 
you got me um, also, Ryan, um, thinking a little bit back to, I chose the gears for the um, adopt and waves and build proficiency and um, optimize and innovate phases because, you know, once you kind of maybe literally get out of plan and design and you're kind of in these more fluid phases of adoption and transformation, they're all impacting each other because you'll always be adopting, maybe not as much in the beginning of as you are in the beginning later on, of course, but you have new people, as you mentioned. And so there's always an element of adopt in waves that's happening. There's always an element of continuously building on your proficiencies and changes and KDA is expanding and evolving and the ability to optimize and innovate, you know, through all of that. So they're always kind of working together at different, you know, different parts, <laughs> really related uh, to me a little bit in thinking about, you know, talking about that a little bit more. That's right. Unless it's a brand new, um, you know, KCS adoption scenario, you, essentially we should expect to have elements of our organization almost in every part at the same time simultaneously. Right. And that's a totally different mindset than I think the way it was written previous mm -hmm. and why I really like this update. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah agreed. Yeah, good. What other, are there any uh, questions coming up in the chat or any other comments uh, from the participants here? There was uh, a question about uh, training and certification updates and those things have happened. Um, the KCSV6 fundamentals uh, and the self, all those self-paced training, the three self-paced training um, classes that we have available on serviceinnovation.org. Um, those are not, were not affected by adoption guide um, updates. Mm -hmm. So those are all good to go. The KCS V6 practices, um, which is instructor led, um, there are some updates that have happened and are available to KCS certified trainers in that workshop. Um, and then the exam had that the practices exam had just a very, very few um, references to adoption phases. So um, those have also been updated, but that was not a significant impact. What yes. else? Adam or Jacob, anything to share on, you know, your experience going through the participating in the discussions or any significant updates meaningful to you that came out of the work that we did. I thought you did a great job of summarizing the changes, Jennifer, and uh, Kelly and Ryan's comments, I think, grounded out really nicely. So um, nothing to add per se, but I would just, you know, kind of underscore a, a couple of points. And I think that the changes reflected in the adoption and transformation guide are really much more reflective of, of the real world as we experience it. And as Jennifer was saying, the environments that we operate in are very dynamic. Things are constantly changing. And so, you know, kind of moving from, from um, phase, moving away from phases and away from this, this linear progression model to a much more loopy model just opens up a world of possibilities and how we view things and allows us to sense and respond to the dynamic aspects of the environment that we that we work in. And you know, the the, the example that I always give here is that um, in, in our implementation here at PAR Technologies, we're using the right answers knowledge base. And one of the many things that we like about it is the decision tree functionality, which some of our tech support agents in wave one discovered and started building decision trees. And by definition, decision trees are, are not a function. Yeah, it's the, that's not a solve loop article, mm -hmm. but it would be uh, a bad judgment call to say, no way, that's phase three, we're in phase two, right? We don't wanna handcuff people. So we wanna add fuel to the fire and encourage those types of activities. And they've really taken to it and we've seen the benefits of that. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm just really excited about the changes and, and the world of possibilities that it opens up. Yeah, great. I, I mean, you're really just describing, I think how the, from a program management perspective and handling, the guidance of the organization doing all this work themselves, you know, and, and doing it right, I think, allowing for those awesome things to take shape and not preventing, oh, it's too soon for that. Oh, we shouldn't be doing that. I think that's really, really smart. I think that gives us more as program managers um, to work with, 
um, for a driving, you know, success and interest in doing, doing this work. Awesome. And, and that's one of the ditches that we talk about, right? Yeah, is this totally. a lot, a lot of times, and I've been guilty of this in, in my early implementations of KCS, it's this, this thought process of we've got to perfect the solve loop before, and get to a certain level of maturity before we can start doing knowledge domain analysis activities. And right. you don't necessarily have to build a formal knowledge domain analysis program and identify KDEs to allow those KDA type of activities to take place within your organization. Yeah, great. Awesome. Thank you, Jacob. There was, I want to say, I just kind of glanced over at the chat. Uh, still some questions about certification. Those are getting answered. Great. Um, a question about suggestions on how to roll the KCS changes out without overwhelming knowledge workers, I think. Just a quick, you know, response to that question, if it hasn't already been answered, would be um, these changes are probably more impacting the program evolve loop uh, KCS council members than the knowledge workers themselves. Um, I certainly wouldn't want to burden knowledge workers with the idea that they're responsible for adoption and transformation um, uh, themselves. I think this is much more of a program leadership level, KCS council level of learning and understanding what, you know, how to set expectations, how to plan uh, for, you know, continuous change um, and, and evolve and move forward with KCS, uh, all while supporting the knowledge workers, but I'm not sure that there's a, a big impact with them on, on these specific changes. Hey, Jennifer, yeah. I would add that the indicators are kind of built to help with that. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so if, if one indicator is all that the team can do, then great. If you can do them all, then even better, right? And so I think you can kind of gauge it by working your way through the indicators. And that's why you know, we, we debated a little bit on, we, we really like the idea of the exit criteria. I, I will say I personally have benefited my career from those exit criteria. Like I really believe in them and I didn't want to see the concept go away. But I think we tried to figure out the right word. And I think we brainstormed about 100 words to way to describe that. <laughs> it was like an, an indicator seemed to make a lot of sense. So mm. that's a great question in terms of how fast do you go? How slow do you go? Um, it's just like, you know, your dashboard in your car, right? These indicators are telling you like, hey, maybe you're going a little too fast for this road because things are, are screaming at you. <laughs> And maybe you can go faster, right? One of the two. And I think that's yeah. how you have to gauge it. There is no right answer for it. It's just you have to look at the indicators and indicate, okay, I can go faster. Oh, I need to dial it back. And that's they're they're put into each category to help you kind of understand, am I ready to take the next step or do I need to stay here longer? Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, great. Yeah. Thank you, Ryan. And then there's a there's a rich question from Vincent in the chat about. One of the things management here really is looking for is a summary page or plan, uh, plan of approach um, for like a one pager that takes them through the journey in hyperspeed. I've had a hard time distilling all that with fundamentals. I hope the changes made will help with that going forward. Currently, I'm basically reading two chapters ahead while trying to keep several pilots or plates spinning. Is there something bite-sized available for, say, a director meeting to present? Anybody have some luck or... A, a brief one pager or a tiny deck they'd be willing to share? <laughs> I mean, I've, I've had to do that presentation where you have 15 <laughs> minutes to talk to someone three levels above you and explain what's going on. Um, do you, have, do you have any magic words? <laughs> uh, I, you know, I've, I've really focused on culture setting mm -hmm. um, and, oh. and, and reiterating the fact that like, a lot of what we're doing with KCS is just adding structure to things that are already inherent. Uh, and that, uh, you know, I always just say like uh, me personally, I never want to call support. And then they have more times than not that aha moment too, of like, I don't either. And I'm like, great. Why don't we work on that? Mm -hmm. Um, and kind of build things out from there. And it's, it seems to be effective. It, you know, you do a presentation enough, you change it and tweak it over time. Very dynamic, but, uh, you know, you can boil it down to about 15 minutes usually. Mm -hmm. 
I think that's a, I think that's a great point also to Chrisenda's question previously, right? In terms of how do you do it without overwhelming knowledge workers? This is a conversation that we sort of started really poking at is how do you frame it up? Because we're actually not asking knowledge workers to do anything they aren't already doing. We're just asking them to do it in a slightly different way. And so really thinking about what their current process is and, um, or, or sort of attaching great future state to current process and helping people see that the leap is not that large, right? So if you get a new question, you're already taking notes. I just want you to take them in a slightly different way, right? If you, so, if you get a new question, you're already searching. I just want you to make sure that you're searching in the right place. That's those sorts of things. So there's a spiel that has worked quite well for me at all levels. Let's hear it. Um, if you're buying a brand new computer and you knew for sure that there was no online support for it, would you buy that computer? No, you wouldn't. Okay. KCS is the methodology that that content is created for our customers that if they do have an issue, they can resolve it very quickly without having to contact support. And then we can do analysis on that to find the pain points for the, for the customer and fix our product so they don't need support at all. Mm. Great. Yeah, I love that. I think, I think adding to this, just one other pointer uh, is really considering what your vocabulary is within your organization to use the right words in an, in a session like this, you know, where you have um, leadership, you know, in, in involved in wanting to know more and understand more Um is, is I think sometimes tailoring what you're reading and consuming from the consortium and from membership, but then actually turning it into something that you can also really gain their attention with because you're using the right vocabulary with that group of leaders um, to get them interested and wanting to understand more. So it's not always just kind of reusing what might be out there. Of course, I think that's important that we're not recreating the wheel every time. Um, but you you want to think about personalizing those messages, you know, a little bit to really get them interested in it. And um, one of the pieces that I spend a lot of time with leadership talking about transformation in KCS is doing it right the first time versus doing it, redoing it over and over again. And I think that as early on as we need to, uh, setting expectations that this isn't about doing it fast and getting it done. This is really a big change management effort, that this is full transformation of the organization working differently, um, and that that doesn't happen overnight. And not any one indicator is going to tell us when we're done, because we'll never be done, you know. And um, getting them involved in that concept of building out a plan and, and, you know, executing on that plan that creates that referenceability and success, little moments of, oh, we're doing it. This is working. Oh, let's build upon that. Let's get to the next level. Let's figure this next bit out. Um, and, and when you start to experience that, it gets really, really exciting because you've built a structure for evolving forward and transforming. There's a lot there. Yeah, good. Any, anything else? <laughs> one call, and I would add, and it's not about the tool. Yeah. <laughs> in terms of setting the leadership <laughs> expectation. Right. But what we were just on a call, I don't re even remember where or who it was, what was with, but in which the realization sort of came out that what we're really doing here is looking for reasons to party. So whatever the smallest wins are that you can find and socialize and talk about, that's what we're doing is we're looking for reasons to party. So- <laughs> I'm going to start using that, Kelly. That's so excellent. <laughs> as small as they may be. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get to the celebratory stuff. That's right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's real easy to sit around and talk about all the things that we could be doing better or that we did wrong or that right, went sideways. But yeah, Which I re is but I reused an article. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's really right. I mean, it, it's a balance of those things, right? It's a balance of um, on this journey that we're recognizing these accomplishments along the way, no matter big or small or anywhere in between, and that we're addressing the challenges we're experiencing because it's not all one way or the other. It's a mix of all the things in there. And um, 
a lot of our consulting and training and certification pre preparedness and um, is is keeping people out of the ditches of KCS. But there's a, a lot of really exciting stuff that happens that I want to make sure we're celebrating along the way, too. That's a big part of of building that momentum um, uh, for the future uh, and continued transformation. So really important part. Yeah, great. I did get um, one question in the chat that says, how do you build adoption and position KCS to a team who sees it as another tedious task? Uh, the task of having to draft solve loop knowledge articles and linking them to support tickets. Ooh, tedious task. So they have the time, but it's tedious. Is that what I'm hearing? Perhaps, maybe. Perhaps it is. Um, if if the if the feedback is that it's tedious, it's complicated, it's too much to expect us to do quickly um, or do it all. I think probably it's it's poking at what's making it tedious, what's making it feel that way, or what's making their experiences. Um, with, you know, trying to do this work or attempting to do this work um, to where they're not interested. Um, if we can listen to the basis for that feedback and understand um, perhaps some opportunities, are there things in the tool or the process we could be changing? Is it measurements that maybe need a little bit of tweaking to maybe better support um, what's expected? I think there's there's no, there's, there, there's definitely not any one answer to this, by the way. Um, but it, it's, I think, starting with really understanding what is tediousness to them and addressing, you know, the realistic, uh, you know, usability of what they're experiencing and figuring out some ways of really listening to that and um demonstrating how we want to make it better for them. We want it to not be tedious. We certainly don't want them to have those experiences or feelings. Um, and what are the areas? Again, it might be tools. It might be process. It might be measures, right? It might be the proficiency model. There's, there's different areas to consider. And it might be all of those things that could be adjusted or changed. Yeah. I think you're spot on. I think that that type of feedback warrants um, asking a lot of questions and understanding is this feedback that you can act on um, once you understand, it, you know, the, the the idea around that. Is it simplification of tooling and process or is it just simply a matter of perception mm -hmm. and some additional education uh, is required? And sometimes it is perception, Jacob, you're totally right. <laughs> <laughs> It ends up not being a real thing. Good. And did we talk about asking them to help design the workflow? Wait, what, Kelly? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Of course, that's a joke. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I think, you know, a, a part of, you know, best practices here for knowledge worker adoption of the solve loop and the new, or the, the difference in the work that they're doing, learning how to work differently is what I was trying to say is, getting them to actually participate in. So how should the tool work, you know, for us to do this well and easily and, and you know, integrate knowledge intuitively into the, the workflow? Um, how, what should the process be? How should we be measured and measuring ourselves and each other, you know, kind of stuff. So get them involved in the actual design. And it's very likely they don't, they won't have the perception that it's tedious. Um, they'll be much more bought into, you know, what's being delivered. Uh, because they contributed to the design of it in the first place. Yeah, great. Perfect, Kelly. <laughs> we there was a there's a great question by um Eli uh asking how do you easily identify the celebratory stuff that resonates with knowledge workers, which was actually part of a conversation that we had with with the field guide crew. So the folks that put together a field guide for KCS program management, which is specifically around how uh, differently, different people want to be celebrated, right? As part of as part of even a recognition program, um, and I think it's so funny how much the answer to many of these questions is: you might have to talk to the people involved, right? It's like you're going to need to ask them what it is that they'd be interested in, or do a little poll, or right, like see how they can, how you can get them involved in the process that is about them. What's the line? If it's about us, don't do it without us. Mm -hmm. And it feels hard. 
I mean, it feels hard even for me, right? Like, and our whole business model is having a community of members. And sometimes I sit around and think about like, well, what would a member like? Well, maybe I should ask a member, right? Like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah, contribution, you know, of work, the knowledge workers contribution, making sure they have visibility to the value they're creating, I think is also definitely another area that we can't look over in answering some of those questions with knowledge workers and their engagement and interest in 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 learning and, and changing and having an impact. Um good. Awesome. Great comments. Yeah. Thank you for the support in the chat, by the way, everyone. It's really great. Good. Well, thanks friends. What a, what a lovely conversation. Yeah. Um, we have recorded this and so I'll send out a link to the email, uh, or this, an email with the link rather, um, when that's all processed and we hope to see you at another consortium event soon. We've got a handful coming up. Um, happy November. Yay. It's it's yeah. almost next year, quite frankly. That's yeah. terrifying. Yeah, thanks Ever again uh, to everybody that participated and joined us today. And of course, the, the members that contributed to the updates of the adoption guide, as always, you know, thank you, thank you. Um, really excited about starting to refer to the updated guide and trainings and, and in working with clients going forward. So I think this is all really exciting. Glad to share. And if, if you have any follow-up questions, we're, we're all always here to answer those questions. It's true. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks so much, Jen. Thanks everybody for coming. Bye. See you later. Thank you. Thanks. See you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.